Because what is the slim about to do? Like, up this little arrow? Okay, uh, I'm landing on someone that I can't yeah. take down, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll, they'll catch! There's a big catch. issue they'll play here! Catch. They'll play catch! And straight in towards the land of Dawn we go. We'll see how well will Brand Esports take down the likes of Toda because this swordfishes are hella tanky. Oh boy. All right, now now that I've caught my breath after laughing so hard here, Todok, the simple idea of what their composition is similar to Game 1, they want to out-macro Bren here, and they've got a bunch of tanks who are actually pretty decent, or fairly decent, actually pushing the lane, given enough time at level 4 itself. X-Ray, he'll be able to clear these waves without having to put himself at risk. Same goes for both Moon and as well as E1. Chico, on the other hand, he can play a little bit more defensively, and with the help of the lineup, can buy a lot more time. And for Maze, he's great at cutting waves. Yep, he does have the average you know just to just set up things for the late game just get that mid game power spike a bit more early but for the side of Bren Esports Carl Peasy here I think will get uh, aggroed a lot by the time we reach level 3 for these guys on Toda. I think we also have to mention the adaptation coming in from Bren realizing what the heck is Torak doing and oh no, they've got quite a lot of wave clear and the only way that they're actually going to maintain it not is, is to not throw in the Loyi who naturally is a very squishy target and if one of these, two of these tanks can get on top of her, no matter how much damage she has, you can itemize against it and yes, she can block the waves but Grok is a much, much safer uh, pick to, uh, to go for. He can face check, he has the power of nature, he clears waves decently fast and arguably even to Todak's tanks. Is it safe to go for killing spree here for Flap? Oh. I, I, feel, I feel that if you don't have anyone to burst down, why would you get a killing spree? I wouldn't say it's a mistake for sure. Oh, here we go. Fight breaking out here. The battle for the gold crab goes over to Chiku. I think uh, he went for the killing spree because Festival of Blood is going to be non-starter against the Baksha. Mm -hmm. it, it's just something else to, you know, if, if I'm not life-stealing, I'll just heal up straight if I'm killing with Execute. Not Yeah, exactly. Not to mention that Execute is a great battle spell against the Thorak lineup when they have like, oh, big shields, a lot of life, no problem. Mm -hmm. E1 gonna get caught oh, out. Oh no, there's the Poissons here and the Blazing Duet, but first blood is drawn by four maze anyways. There's the Oki Shadow Kill. Lusty barely survives with the Blessing and in comes Flapped Easy. Is it too late? The answer is no, he gets one. Avatar the Guardian, can he get two? Yes, he does double kill. Down goes four maze. And now Moon, he's going for the duel, but there's enough shot energy here on Flapped Easy to survive. So that's what the killing spree is for. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it adds up. It all comes full circle. But don't forget that while this is happening, Todak, we saw them do this in game one. As long as, I mean, Bren can trade up as much as they want. But if the return of investment is going to go on Todak's side, yeah, throw as many people. Take all of our guys. If you can't push and you can't get a gold lead off of that, no big deal. Mm. E1 here just staying near that brush, just trying to secure, just trying to see if there is a turtle take going on for the side of Bren Esports. Now, Claude isn't getting Ooh. controlled, but Chiku there <laughs> is going to be the next casualty for the side of Toda. Okay, that was uh, a nice catch by Bren Esports, and there might be another here in mid. Lusty just just catching everything that these two chunky tanks in mid, Moon and E1, are bringing. And if, there any, if there's anything here that we can note, uh, it's the fact that Brenny Sports here ahead by about 600 gold. Mm -hmm. Actually, Todak earlier was up higher. Yeah. They, they were playing more of the map again three minutes in, so they have the same one-track mind, they have the same plan. But right now, here we go. Moon engaging with Kaltizi, and now a few beads. After the Guardian, oh, nice battle mirror image out. Moon is in no man's land. He goes down. Sticker goes up for Kaltizi. That's going to be one to four. This is great because now Bren, before this Lancelot, super susceptible to a lot of tanks because, again, he is melee. He, if he's going to get any damage in, the auto attacks are important. Four maze, same thing, same problem. If he wants to go in and it so happens to be, you know, Alice or Flap Easy or even Lusty, big, big deal here. He won't be able to cut through them. Yep, now Rebo, blood flow out of here. He's in trouble. He got two beads on him, E1 and Chiku. Now I'm wondering, this is the first time we're seeing Chiku on an Esmeralda. He've al he's always played the side laner uh, that uh, is very, very safe. Sometimes Esmeralda has to dive. I wonder how he uh, transitions to that. Now X-Ray jumps in. Wrath of the Dryad gonna take one out. Kyle Deasy caught out by the roots. 
but it looks like Vengeance is nearly upon us. Vindication! They're looking for Vindication and they just gave up. Oh, there's the damage now. Oogie Shadow Kill onto one. Rebo is going to survive, but only for so long because he's going to be destroyed here by Chico. Uh -oh. Now uh -oh. goes for the wild charge, misses, and that's going to be a sticker. Oh, I feel bad. Now it's going to be three on one. That's going to be the revitalized dropped in and an arrow from down below. Few says, hold up, I'm a little too late. How did he get so much movement speed all of a sudden? I, I, oh, I mean, well, I mean, well done to Todak here, but every single time we see a fight uh, being started from red, especially when one of the Todak members is deep inside a really off position, we gotta look elsewhere across the map because Todak is making something happen. Mm. Now for Bren Esports, yes, Alice might have uh, gone down, Rebo and Lusty could have uh, just offered himself right there as sacrifice. Karantizi here is still kind of a bit good in terms of his farming. Oh yeah, very good indeed. But, you know, just give it some time. Have faith in Karantizi here because he is playing on a hero who is going to be abusing a Demon Hunter sword, which is going to be the bane of the existence of Todak because the more health you have, the stronger this item is going to be. Demon Hunter sword is another way to actually do it. Yep, so hoping that they find that. Oh, it goes to Lusty. That's going to be uh, the turtle now down as well as E1. Flapizi gets the kill so far. This killing spree, Yu Zhang, is paying dividends for Brandy Sports. Two for none, plus the turtle. I think they're just finding their ground. They must be feeling great. Mm -hmm. They're feeling really great indeed. And I think, you know, just some great adaptations on Bren's side to say, yes, we are going to shut this composition down one way or another. Chiku does get a return investment on, to on towards that top side. But again, Bren only just slightly ahead. They need more than this. Flap TZ is just uh, doing uh, great for his teammates. Now, I guess for a few, we're not seeing a lot of these arrows just because it wouldn't really take just one Ooh. arrow to take out people here. But here comes the fight. Wild charge. That is going to be a disengage. In, but it's not going to be enough. What are you saying? Now, I was actually done with my... <laughs> I was actually done with my thought, but Perfect. there's just a fight happening. Perfect. Again. Perfect. Lusty from Lusty? behind. There's the saving arrow. It's going to be enough. Moon is so brave. Moon is so brave. He's in. He's able to charge up. The oh. Avatar Guardian to escape. And that is going to be the purple. That's going to be their consolation. Demon Hunter Sword is now up for oh. Carl. Let us see what will that do. What difference will it make for the side? of Bren Esports. Yeah, can we pull up the item list real quick? I want to see where Kartizi actually is at with the dive coming in from Todak on towards that bot side to try and punish Flapdeezy, but the rest of Bren is coming in. Mm -hmm. That's okay. going to be all oh, the black dragon forms are in by Flapdeezy. In he goes. E1 is taking a lot of damage and that's going to be Few getting a kill and in mid, Ogi shadow kill. The ult on the Hayabusa popped in, but Lusty just wants to clear the waves. All right, so there was some minions and just Lusty was not going to have any of it. So so he survived the most part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, but for surprise. But for Bren Esports, it's not about going for the team fights. It's divide and conquer. Divide them, separate on them on the map, kill them one by one. As long as they don't have the team fight up, a uh, team fight on us, we're gonna win. Yep, and that's exactly what's happening here. They don't want to face down three tanks all at the same time. And now, oh, oh, oh the swing, the clothesline from Hell helps, but it's not gonna be enough. Moon retreats once more with another Avatar, the Guardian, and Lusty wants to finish the job. He started. E1 pushes him back. The enforcers of Todak Esports. Oh, this is so frustrating. But Brent, they're going to get all the neutral objectives here. And Todak, they know. Okay, it looks like we're going to have to play for late, late game here. Just called easy. The moment he gets that uh, golden, uh, golden staff, it's going to be impossible for Todak to actually be relevant, especially for the tanks to be relevant in this game. Yes, Bellerick, yes, can have a great passive to bounce him multiple times. But that doesn't mean they're going to win the fight. Yep, and here we go. That's going to be the Ogi Shadow kill called off. Quad Shadow out of here. I don't want none of this. Uh, they're looking to go maybe for another choke. Unless it's looking dire because look down bottom, Chiku is slowly pushing once more. That's something they got to watch out for. Mm -hmm. Yep, for May is making sure that he's showing tribute to the fallen foes that they did uh, did dirty yesterday. Can they do it again on to Bren this time around? Lusty just you know walking around just saying, hey, I need to know what's going on. E1 finally getting that blade armor. But Kaltizi on the side, Golden Staff being prod. Yeah, and uh, with that uh, blade armor, Bren Esports need to look out for their damage output. They cannot just throw it loosely because they might that might bite themselves oh, at the back. Oh, 
up. Mirror, Battle Mirror Image out. Avatar the Guardian is going to come in. Hit few, but not Carthese. Not just yet. Moon taking quite a few hits there. Oh, in comes Carthese. That's going to be the knockout. Oh, he still survived. Oh, he still survived. The one is alive with the Poissons. And that's going to be a disengage. And they want more. I think it's going to be Thordax prime time to engage. Flappy in the front line taking quite a few hits. Caught in with the lockdown by X-Ray. Wrath of the Dryad going to push him back. Another disengage. And Blazing the wet from the back. Chiku takes quite the beating. And that's going to be one for Carl TZ. Make that two. Four maze goes down as well. Few blasting him. It's a triple for Bren Esports. Down goes four maze. And it took a while, but they eventually got it down. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is one of those situations where you have to admit that in the previous game, Bren, uh, when you have something like Lancelot, he really struggled. But now with, with Carl TZ on this clod, he's having the time <laughs> of his life. Look at the block. Yeah. But that doesn't matter as he can jump from that, but there is another kill up top. Now, this is a problem for Todak. In terms of their lineup, their early game is good. They can go for a lot of the defense. If they win those, they might win the game. But for Bren Esports right now, they know that Todak has no comeback mechanic on this. Mm -hmm. Yep, they're just going to have to stall it out. Brick wall Bren, as long as they don't break their crystal or their inhibitors, they have a very good opportunity to turn this around given like, you know, 20 minutes or so. And here comes the penetration and the fight actually breaks out all in. Chiku going to be backing up but there's Rebo on the other side to catch him off. Black Dragon formed now by Flap Easy to try and find a kill. Chiku goes down. Rebo finds him down bottom and they are going to continue the assault. E1 goes down. Avatar of the Guardian catches quite a few but there is the blazing duet. Cause he's doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just four maze left to defend. Can he do this? Brandy Sports looking low. There's the block by Lusty and this might just be it. Quad Shadow. Oki Shadow Kill going in. Is there enough damage? Ladies and gentlemen, that's one. Lusty goes. Can they continue? Can they finish? That's the question. 11 minutes, 20 seconds in. They'll take the lower tier turret. Is Brent taking too long here or is they going to finish? It feels like I, it's a ladder. I think it's a ladder. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Brent Sports takes game number one, forcing game number three. Oh boy, that is uh, that is a difficult situation to be in here for Toda, but honestly, great adaptation coming in from Brent, especially with that quad pick. Ooh. Really comes in handy. And I'm not going to lie, I didn't expect Belrix passive to almost put Kaltizi in a very uncomfortable spot at literally 10% HP. Very much so, and now things are evening up, and we're going on a tie, one to one. Brand Esports still carrying the hopes of the Philippines. You can definitely see both sides already sweating it out, but Todak's side, they crafted this composition, hoping that they can break wall the side of Brand Esports, but that drop pick honestly walled them off, and slowly but surely, having each one of these pigs coming out of Kodak. Yeah.